want to start off my book series with probably the most important art book I was ever introduced to. The uh, Human Figure by John Henry Vanderpool. I heard about this very early on when I first started to go to school at the American Academy of Art in Chicago. It's a small book, but it is... I, I guess I... I really needed to share this with people because it is, was so important to me, and I think it's such a great resource. Um, John Henry Vanderpool was born in 1857 and died in 1911, and his book was published in, I think, 1908 or 1907, and um, it's just been a staple for art schools ever since. Here are four of my books that I own. <laughs> you can see on the left it is a hardcover and then an older version which was I think printed around the 50s or 60s and then newer versions. Um, the third one is when I the one I got probably when I first got to school and the one on the right is a newer version and the reason why I show this because if you do want to get one, I really recommend you get one that's as old as possible. The reproductions are much better. Here's a photograph of um, John Vanderpool um, at the 1893 Columbia Exposition in Chicago, and he is the third um, in, the, well, he's in the middle. <laughs> and um, it's so fun to see photographs like this. It really captures, you know, what it was like to be in a salon back then. And here is a photograph of him that is used in the book, very distinguished. Here is a picture of the couple that Scott and I met when we visited the uh, Vanderpool Museum in Chicago. It's in a southern suburb called Beverly. Not very far. I mean, it's really pretty close, you know, driving distance to downtown. Um, the interesting thing is, is that it was in a community center. In fact, when we first went there, we didn't think we were in the right place, and we went to a different art gallery, and they're like, no, I think you were in the right place. So we drove back and couldn't believe it, and, <laughs> and this couple said that, no, they deal with that a lot. It, it really is just a, a big room in this old um, community center with like gymnasiums and children's playrooms. Um, it wasn't air-conditioned, they are volunteers, and all these paintings uh, were donated by students um, or others that had something to do, you know, were a part of Vanderpool's life. Um, and in his time, he, he taught for like 30 years at the Art Institute of Chicago and had many famous art students like George O'Keefe and Joseph Leyendecker. Um, and so he really uh, was a a great leader back then and, and um, influenced a lot of wonderful artists. When we got to the um, museum, we noticed this case where they had the original drawings and those drawings um, were around 11 by 14, somewhere around there. When we asked them if we could take photos and they were like, sure. And she opened the case and she, you know, showed them to us. And I was so scared that any minute she was, they were going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, could you stop? We can't do this anymore. And Scott just kept taking photo after photo after photo. And I think we literally, it took probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes for us to do this, but we felt it was so important. They had said there was one other uh, couple that had come years before that wanted to take photos. But other than that, People either don't know about this museum or maybe when they come and visit, they don't feel um, confident enough to ask to take photos. But I feel like this is so important for posterity and I really wanted to share all of this with, you know, future artists. Also, I wanted to show you the um, the book on the left is a newer version. The book on the right is an older version. And then here is the original drawing. This is one of his, um, I would say, um, masterpiece drawings. It is on the cover of the um, paperback versions. 
and I, I'm, I guess I'm just going to talk a little bit about each drawing, about why I love them so much and what I've learned from them. He doesn't over model the muscle planes, meaning there's not a lot of half tones. There's, you're not over emphasizing. And I love how he had the arms sort of disappear into the, the paper and he leads the eye through from the, you know, the, the head down through the spine into the, you know, bottom. And it's hard to put into words. Why do I love this so much? There's something about the ability to draw the eye with the heaviness of line in certain areas in the left hip. And then the delicacy of the ghost-like line on the right. You, you, as you walk down that calligraphy, you know, there's um, the, the strength of the line right in the upper armpit on the right and as it goes down to the waist how it gets lighter and then just showing a little bit more emphasis on the hip and then as it goes down to the thigh it gets lighter that is all the understanding about where form turns and and it's like a sharper edge and a lighter edge all just dealt with line and you know how he has darker shapes in the hair and the bottom to balance the drawing but in the spine and the shoulder blade how those are lighter because he didn't want every shadow to be the same strength there's a hierarchy um and just the solidity of the shapes they all hold together um, when i teach and i talk about keeping the shape solid it means that there's not a lot of distraction within that shape you know technique or um, scratchiness or airiness or um, bravura I mean I guess I'm trying to find how do I want to explain this is keeping it solid and quiet maybe that's the way I'm trying to think of it is how do you keep your shapes simple and pleasing to the eye and to hold back you know how, how do the, does it hold up from far away this is the torso of a man it looks looks very painterly to me i love that um light shape down the very center of his uh, breastbone and you know if you look at the pectoral muscles on either side of that light stroke and if you squint you see that there is a value, but he kept it in the light plane. So it means those shapes, those half tones could never be as dark as the shadow side of the body. This is also just a beautiful um, torso. Uh, it's so fascinating how he really does go into more full value in the face, yet it doesn't distract you. You really only look at the chest area and the stomach. Um, it's just such, I, I wish I could put into words why that works, <laughs> but it does. Um, it kind of balances too, because maybe if you went too light in the face, maybe it wouldn't have the weight and it wouldn't look as balanced. I'm always trying to figure out why do I like something so much? I also like that the whole shadow shape is solid he doesn't go in there and show you reflective lights and um you know muscles and all that stuff it's he wants you to look at the larger shapes the larger light shapes and the larger shadow shapes great movement i love the contour lines on the outer of the shapes of the body um and i also just love how he emphasizes parts of the line and then eases up and then emphasizes to me, this looks like a painting in a way, maybe because he deals more with shapes than he does with like lines or linear. Um, to me, I, I, I th when I look at these drawings, I think these could be done in oil. I think why I like these drawings be is because he limits his halftones. 
if I was to really narrow it down, I like how there's mystery to the shadows and there is simplicity to the light pattern. And he has just a very, very delicate touch and only emphasizes certain areas where needed. Doesn't do it everywhere, just in places where it's most important. I love how he draws the um, elbows and the hands, really thinking of them as larger planes and not over rounding things or looking at too much detail very structural um, like things have weight minimizing the smaller details of you know fingers or tendons or smaller muscles you see how he allows edges to disappear into the background like on the left how the collarbone and the shoulder you know there's not a hard line there only he he only presses down where he wants to balance or he wants to prove that something is turning abruptly um where form is turning slower the pressure of the line isn't as strong like in the forearm the forearm muscle to the bottom how it is lighter and then as it gets towards the bone of the elbow it gets crisper and more angled and stronger which is showing you that structures are turning more abruptly. Shows you the largest shapes. That is something that I've learned from artists like Sargent and Richard Schmidt and Anders Zorn. The ability to give you what is important and to leave a lot out. It's it's a pleasing feeling to, um, I guess, not have as much information. Now this little diagram drawing kind of talks about how form kind of goes up and down and over. And when I'm teaching, I talk to my students about how my eye is walking over the form. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. How my eye will go up one muscle, across till it changes direction, and goes down the muscle to another plane where it goes up and then over and walking down. And if you can train your eye to think of it as you're like a hiker going up and over mountains, and you will start to see form as being three-dimensional. I like how he really simplifies the toes. Um, I learned a lot um, by this and also watching someone like Richard Schmidt paint fingers and toes and how really you, you don't want to emphasize every toe. You want to think of the larger shape and angle and hint. That is the key word, hinting at individual toes or fingers, but not over modeling smaller shapes like that because otherwise it it makes you look, you know, it brings too much attention to them. I love how he always likes to play with light, you know, having the light come from above and the light coming from below, and especially in children because their faces and their head structures are so round. It's interesting you see how he used a little bit of chalk and how he emphasized the chalk on the forehead but then as he went down to the cheeks and the neck and the nose it's much less knowing that every highlight or every light plane cannot have the same strength and as the light goes down away from the light source it will be less and i just i loved his sensitive touch i loved how he could simplify the planes, but still have the most 
delicate touch with his charcoal. These drawings to me also look very painterly. Um, I like being able to see the strokes in a way. Not everything is overly smoothed out. It looks like sculpture. You, I mean, you see the um, eraser strokes on the forehead or the cheeks and they look like brush strokes. He leaves them so that they look painterly. I love how he studied every part of the body. And it's interesting how even the neck, how one drawing looks much more linear and one drawing looks a little more solid and the exact same poses. And it's all up to you how you want to express yourself. I like the uh, close-up of the lips because it really shows you the planes of the lips and that lips are muscles and they are not just you know round they have angles um, I emphasize a lot when I teach angles because think about yourself think of yourself as a carpenter do angles first and then then soften edges where needed. And if you do that, it shows gravity. It shows things are solid. When we over soften things, form disappears. And I know it happens to me on my work. If I over soften things, it gets wishy-washy and uncomfortable. Um, studying drawings like this, you really start to see that even lips have shapes and angles and strong planes um, to work with. These are great exercises. This is something that when I was in school, I loved to do. Get a sketchbook and just practice over and over again. I just love how simplified he did these little children's faces. How delicate he was and how he didn't go in there and put too much detail. His eyes are definitely, I think, something that people are very attracted to. I absolutely learned so much from him showing us how the lid goes around the eyeball. If you really study it, you have to think of it as a blanket, a blanket covering a ball. And also that the eyeball is inside the head so we have to keep thinking about that now making the eye bulge forward and to realize that the angle of the upper lid is much more forward towards the nose bridge and the lower lid is always at an angle more towards the inner part of the face This really helps us see the nose is three-dimensional and that um, seeing things with angles, always remembering that you know noses are three-dimensional. They really do need angles. <laughs> if you round them out, people start to look like stuffed animals and they get they start to look like children. And it took me a long time to get the confidence to give people the noses that they have and to really give them shape and not trying to over soften. I like this diagram because it really shows you the angles of the profile, how it angles in and then it angles towards the lips and then it angles back. This is very um, basic, but faces in general have this sort of zigzag pattern. This 
drawing was under glass, so we weren't able to get the best photograph. But I love his sensitivity. I love his touch. I love how he has his the edges, you know, disappear into the background, and how the his edges are so soft, but everything holds together. That's what I find so amazing about him. I like how he simplified the eye and, you know, just the hair just looks so delicate. It's um, very, just very sweet, very sweet drawing. Also, how he didn't overemphasize the ear. It's something that is very important when you're doing profiles. Be careful about doing a portrait of an ear. I love how he builds up his darks. I really learned that from him, that you would have the same touch throughout, and then on top of that, he would go darker in the hair in certain areas. And it just sort of developed. It, um, the, that's how you would create softness, is by building up. Not so much pressing down, but the building up of just gentle, gentle layers. Just a very um, sensitive drawing. I love how the feet kind of are just slightly, you know, described. And the detail is all in the hands. And, you know, just her, her eyes. That's only where you have some darks. Everywhere else is just hinted at. And that's the give and take of fine art kind of telling people where to look but letting so much of it sort of be quiet. I wanted to show you some of the artwork that was there. Um, a few pieces, I didn't know the names, but I thought you would just enjoy being able to see some of these paintings and um, maybe inspire you to go visit the museum. I leave you with this drawing because to me this uh, exemplifies why I love his work so much. His sensitivity and his quietness and um, allowing the viewer to add so much to the experience. He didn't tell you too much. Um, I really hope you all enjoyed this book and maybe you'll go out and buy it and I really wish you all happy drawing.